the poetry collection is very much involved with place. She marks geographic locations, she marks freeway numbers, she marks streets, she marks cities. And I think this is an assertion of the time, place, and positionality of the work. And I think it, it sort of suggests that the collection needs to be read or can't be read correctly without an understanding of this place. And I wanted to start by talking about a poem called Beneath the Shadow of the Freeway. Again, we see a marker just Within the title, we see the place marked. Uh, and it's about a family, uh, a grandmother, uh, her daughter, and the granddaughter, who is the speaker. And she goes on, the speaker does, to talk about her grandmother uh, in some really, some really fascinating ways. In the third section at the end, it says, She believes in myths and birds. She trusts only what she builds with her own hands. She built her house, cocky, disheveled carpentry, after living 25 years with a man who tried to kill her. Here we have this recollection of her, the, the gendered violence that her grandmother experienced and how she sort of escaped it, right? But it's more than that because... If the poem was just about her grandmother, then we could say, okay, it's about recording this history of gendered violence. But the poem is about her, the speaker, understanding that gendered violence, being privy to that gendered violence, right? So we're starting to get a historical transmission, right, between the grandmother and the granddaughter is being evoked here. And it's in, I think that's sort of, emphasized again with the end of the poem. Back. The freeway is across the street. It's summer now. Every night I sleep with a gentleman to the hymn of mockingbirds. The gentleman, we see a transformation, right? And it, she's learned something from that experience and she's expressing it here. And the, the poem continues. And in time I plant geraniums. I tie up my hair into loose braids and trust only what I have built with my own hands. I think when we have it repeating here, a couple of things are happening. One is that another register I think develops, right? To trust with only what you have built with your own hands. It's material because the grandmother built the house, but I, I feel that it's also symbolic. There's another register of, of not just physical structures built, but cultural, emotional, and kinship structures that are built with her own hands, meaning that they have created as a counter structure to the patriarchy and the violence, right? We were a woman family, it says at the beginning, right? She plants the geraniums, right? She's building for the future. She's fostering the home her grandmother built. She's continuing the culture, right? The cultural creation uh, or the kinship creations of her grandmother, right? And trust only what I have built with my own hands is the final line, right? Transformation, um, gendered transformation of histories and knowledges. Her grandmother is this, what she centers as the from where knowledge is coming to her. To go back to the line, three lines up, which is I tie up my hair into loose braids, right? It's, it's this evocation of preparing her body for labor. But why loose braids? Well... It could be that the looseness is supposed to imply a fluidity of her adaptability. She is never going to be bound tightly, tight braids to anything. And she will continue to evolve and grow uh, um, from her grandmother's centered knowledge.